Hey friends, it is Lindsay Curry back for part two of the spooky writing workshop. I'm so excited. I hope that by this stage you've had an opportunity to actually watch the video for part one of this workshop, which focused a lot on setting and how to create the right atmosphere and tone and setting for your spooky novel without necessarily actually putting it in a spooky place, which I realize tends to be our first instinct. But today we're gonna to talk about using all five of our senses to create a truly vivid, spooky story. And I think you guys are really gonna like it. So let me remind you right now, if you haven't already done this, if you would like to have a paper copy of what we're doing today, it's on my website at lindsaycurry.com. Go back to that teacher resources tab and scroll down until you see the word spooky 101. And for today, you're gonna to print off the one with this headline, using all five senses for your spooky story. Okay, once you have that printed, grab yourself a pen or a pencil. And friends, if you don't have a printer, no big deal. I'm gonna be reading all of this and I'm gonna be showing the images, the pictures up to the camera anyway, so you will be just fine, okay? So let's kick it off by talking about books that we have read in the past that are so vivid that you feel like you're there. Now I know we've all read one of these, maybe more than one of these, which is extremely lucky because it's a magical experience. So for me, I'm gonna list one of those books right now. I think almost any book in the Harry Potter series is one that's written so extremely realistically and vividly that I feel like I am there in Hogwarts or in potions class or whatever the characters are doing, I feel like I'm with them. And that is a tremendous, thing that J.K. Rowling has done, right? And so any author who manages to do something like this has got a good thing going. And I know that we can do the same thing. It just takes some practice. So let's start by figuring out how they do this. How are they creating such vivid scenes that pull us right in with the characters? Well, for one, they are making sure that they are describing everything by using all five of their senses. And why is this important? Well, it's important because most of the time when we describe things, we rely on one of our senses. Which one do you think we rely on most that we tend to um, always come back to first? It's our sense of sight. We often use our sense of sight and that's like our most predictable and most used sense when it comes to describing things in books. And that's great. But it's not our only sense. We have several others that are also very powerful. And when you put them all together, they create a much more vivid scene than just using one. So let me show you what I'm talking about, okay? We're gonna start with an activity. I have a photo for you here that I'm gonna hold very close to the camera. So you're gonna see this instead of me for a minute. Take a look at this little building. This is in Graceland Cemetery. This is a mausoleum or a tomb in Graceland Cemetery. This is an important little building because I used it a lot when I was researching for, pretty sure you guys will remember this cover, The Peculiar Incident on Shady Street, and also to some degree for Scritch Scratch. I spent a lot of time in, in Graceland. And I stopped and I noticed a bunch of different things there. This was only one of the things that I kind of stopped and paid attention to. And when I took this picture, I thought this would be great to work into one of my workshops because it's such an interesting photo. So what I, I want you guys to do with this photo right now is I'm gonna hold it up for a moment closer to the camera so you won't see me. And my, my goal for you is for you to just write down some observations. What do you notice about the building itself? What do you notice about the environment? Um, there is a little bit of a filter on this. I'll tell you guys right now, it has a noir filter on it, but it was still a pretty dark and cloudy day, okay? Once you have some observations, observations down, we're gonna meet up again, and we're gonna talk a little bit about those observations and what we can actually deduce about this photo and what it felt like to be there at the time. So here it is up close. I'm gonna be nice and quiet here for just a minute while you guys work on this. What do you, what do you notice about this? Okay, 
Okay, hopefully you guys have some decent observations going here. I'm gonna flip this back over, okay? And if you need more time, you can always take a look at it um, on my website as well. But let's talk about some of my observations. I'm gonna grab um, my, actually all I have with me is a Sharpie right now, so I'll grab that and let's use that. Um, so one of the first observations I notice about this little building um, is that it's it's very old looking, right? So I'm gonna kind of circle like the darkening on the bricks. I can tell it's pretty old. And about the surroundings, I'm noticing that the trees in the background don't have any leaves on them. You guys notice that? It actually looks like a, almost like a, a big bony claw rising up behind that tomb, which is interesting. Um, I'm also noticing that there's something on the ground here around it. Maybe these spots, those might be a scattering of leaves on the ground. Now, if those are leaves on the ground, and there's no leaves on the tree really, although it does look like there's some on these side trees, uh, maybe this picture was taken in what season? Fall? Yeah, this was actually taken in late fall. So end of October. Uh, well, I guess that's not really late fall, but end of October this was taken. Uh, what else do we notice about this? Now, I mentioned that there's a filter on this, but even without the filter, the circle on the sides here, these clouds moving in, you guys see those? Those were actually there. It was pretty dark this day and the wind was kind of picking up a little bit too, okay? So from that, I might think that maybe there was some bad weather coming in. Just think about how the air feels and smells when there's a storm coming. I'm pretty sure you guys have been in a situation before where you're out and about, maybe you're out running errands with parents, or you're hanging out with friends, and then you get this feeling that it's gonna start storming. Sometimes the temperature changes, right? It may drop suddenly. Um, sometimes the, the air might actually smell like rain. That's happened to me before. Um, and also, if we're right, and I'm, and I'm telling you um, the, the season here being late October in Chicago for right about the possible smells here at that time. Well, Chicago can be pretty chilly in late October. There's a lot of fireplaces going. It may have smelled a little bit like a burning fireplace. So right now we're making observations by using our eyes, but then we're also using our past experiences and our imaginations to work in our other senses, even though you weren't here with me when I took this picture. And our goal is to make sure that if we were writing about this particular scene here, that we would make our reader feel like we're, that they're there as well. Okay, so I'm going to read you a passage now, friends. This is a finished passage from The Peculiar Incident on Shady Street, okay? And I want you to see how I used all five of my senses when I was in Graceland to create this scene. Now, as I'm reading, I want you guys, if you have this in front of you, to circle or highlight any of the senses that you see represented, okay? So if you see sight represented in something, I want you to circle it. Here we go. Orange leaves rain down, then plaster themselves to the wet pavement. The partially bare tree limbs rattle against each other in the wind, making me think of bones all the bones tucked down in the soggy earth around us. I hold my breath as another stiff breeze howls across the stretch of headstones, bringing with it the smell of burning wood, a fireplace. Mm, I'm seeing a lot of senses represented here, okay? Let's, let's start at the beginning. We've got um, orange leaves raining down, right? Um, we've got wet pavement, that can actually kind of be too, right? Because that's a sight, but also wet pavement can have a smell, right? That can have a smell. What about our partially bare tree limbs rattling against each other in the wind? We've got our sense of hearing represented. And then we've also got a stiff breeze howling across the headstones. A stiff breeze, that's our, our, t our sense of, of touch, right? We can feel a stiff breeze. We can imagine a stiff breeze. And what about this last one? The smell of burning wood, the fireplace. That's our sense of smell, right? We have four of the five senses represented here. We're missing one. Do you guys know which one we're missing? Taste. I didn't taste anything in the graveyard that day. Um, so that one is definitely missing. But now it's gonna be your turn, friends. I wanna see what you can do using your five senses and some photos, okay? So here is where 
I'm gonna hold up a couple of pictures, all right? I'm gonna try to give you a little bit of time to look at the picture before I switch it to the next one, but honestly, guys, you might wanna to head to my website for this portion so you have longer with your picture or you can print it. And what I want you guys to do is use your five senses to write a paragraph based on the picture. It doesn't have to be spooky. It, your senses may lead you to write something spooky, but it doesn't have to be. Your goal is to make it as vivid as it can possibly be, okay? You want your reader to feel transported, all right? So here we go. I'm going to switch my papers around. We're gonna start with photo one. Here is the first one. Okay guys, if you want more time and you're choosing this photo, you can go to my website to the teacher resources tab and pull it up and look at it as long as you need or print it off. I'm gonna move on. Here is our second photo. This is kind of a, a sunset photo. Okay, and here is our final photo. This is a, a headless sculpture in Graceland Cemetery. Okay. Good luck, everybody. I hope your five senses lead you to some amazing descriptions. I know that they're going to. I also hope I get an opportunity to see some of these descriptions. I think that would be just incredible because I can't wait to see what you all come up with. Great job today, and I will see you guys all again soon for another section of our spooky writing workshop. Talk to you soon, friends.